Um, we're going to start off real strong. Um, what are your long-term plans or hopes for the podcast? Oh, so there's no introduction? Oh, no introduction. Wait, what are we doing introduction-wise? What are we doing the introduction? <laughs> are we telling people what's going on? Oh, hey. <laughs> No, we go. It's it's a cold cut. We're going straight, straight to. It. In. <laughs> Hi, I'm investigative reporter Corey of Corey's Cauldron. <laughs> I'm here today with your average witch podcast, Kim. Hi, Kim. Are you ready for all these really intense questions? Are they intense? No, they're not really intense. I have uh, only. I don't even know what they are, folks. So it's going to be exciting because yeah. usually uh, my guests my guests get the questions in advance, but I decided not to do that for entertainment value. And some of these are going to put you a little bit on the spot, which is going to be fun. Oh, no. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Like, there are some fun ones, and then there are, like, some more in-depth ones. Um, But I'm super excited. So, to explain what's going on today, um, it is the pod birth. Yay! It's not pod birth. Actually, this is going out in July. So, last week was the pod birth. Oh, yay! Actually, Um, today is Waba's birthday today as we were recording oh my gosh it's waba's birthday and i forgot to wish them phone time let's wish them the happy yeah. birthday right now <laughs> are you doing it on like the facebook group or just messaging them i'm just texting, texting. i don't have the patience have to go phone. through all that crap i don't have their phone number <laughs> i don't care i pester them on facebook messenger all the time Okay, I accidentally typed hair pod birth, so that's what Charlie gets. That's what she gets for giving you COVID. (laughs) She was the first one I messaged. I was like, so I can't taste or smell anything. She was like, no. (laughs) Um, So uh, we are doing this episode as a recognition of your average witch pod birth. Horn, horn, horn. Um, two so, years. Two years, which is wild. Like, mm-hmm. just wild. It's um, really weird. It is. Corey's Cauldron will be a year old in a couple of months. Oop. That's going to be strange. I don't know what I'm going to do. Is it a Sagittarius? Uh, August, so. Leo. Leo. Not Leo. <laughs> is it not? Because that seems fitting. <laughs> one rude how dare you i love you <laughs> um what is august we're bad witches look at us i thought it was i swear that's it isn't that when charlie's birthday is i thought leo was watch well, is gonna be like it's gonna be um <laughs> it's gonna be leo and i'm gonna be like oh no i just totally i, I totally gaslit you It worked. So I was like, I don't know anything about astrology. <laughs> I was convinced it was Virgo, which it, honestly, Corey's Cauldron might be a cusp baby. I don't know. I'll have to double check. That would be interesting. I don't know crap about Virgo, except that Jenna Marbles is one. Oh, that's a really high standard. Please don't have that standard for me. <laughs> Too late. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, so oh god now everybody's gonna see how many times i fucking compulsively put on <laughs> lip balm <laughs> is that the one that you made though is that the one that dried no. out oh damn this is the one from my hip surgery <laughs> oh. i was like can you please bring me some lip balm <laughs> after the <laughs> surgery and i was like barely conscious <laughs> um so introduction We are doing this episode. We've flipped the script a little bit. Um, And I am interviewing Kim with questions that listeners have asked. And so Kim has no idea what the questions are. I hate that. I I know. And you volunteered for that. So that's the best part, too. I know. I was like, do you want these questions? And you said no, which (laughs) seems cruel to do to yourself. (laughs) All right, are you ready for the first question? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you already heard it because I already told yeah, you. Yeah, but no, I didn't because my brain was not listening to you. <laughs> You're like, this is not what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So the first question is, what are your long-term plans and hopes for the podcast? Happily, I just finished a business class where I had to develop that anyway. So (laughs) perfect. (laughs) Was this Melissa? (laughs) Uh, This is actually a question that came up a couple of times. So my long-term goal is to be doing this as my job. It Mm -hmm. will be the major part of my new subscription service. It's not really a service. I don't know what to call it, but my new subscription platform that I am going to build to leave Patreon, maybe leave Facebook. I know a lot of people, it's convenient. So it will be another option for Patreon. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it's going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to, new witches are born every day. There are so many witches that I haven't even thought about meeting yet. So as long as there's witches, this podcast exists and I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. Very cool. And authors are coming out of the woodwork as it feels like. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because I now have a wonderful contact named Marcus through Llewellyn. Yeah. Oh, another thing that I plan on doing is traveling. I want to do on location. And in fact, I will be recording a live podcast at Anahata's this year. Yay. That's exciting. So I there's the your... answer to that question, I think. Yeah. Very cool. If I don't answer it well, then tell me. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry. Okay. You didn't answer that question at all. You just veered off about McDonald's. (laughs) (laughs) So so anyways, back to the question. Um, (laughs) Yes, do that. What's something about your worldview that's changed or is changing due to witchcraft? My worldview? I don't know what that means. So like how you view or interact with the world around you. Um, Some people can take it kind of like, in a way of um, my whole worldview. Yeah. Like how you, how you actually interact with the world around you. It's a little bit smaller. That's interesting. Because I talked to, I mean, one of my f- season one interviews was, was with someone from South Africa. Oh yeah. I don't know anybody in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> That's really but it turns out that my best friend and her, brother's girlfriend Mm -hmm. was interested in being on the show. If you remember Aiden Swan. Yeah. The tarot artist. She, she's the one I'm talking about. So it's smaller. I don't, I don't really think about the world because I think very local to me. Cause if I think about the world, I'll have a panic attack. and can't function. (laughs) Um, So what, about the way that you navigate your life has changed because of witchcraft. I think that's the root of this question. Okay. Witchcraft wise. I just, I, it's, I have so many different ways of looking at things like just the one that I released yesterday, Marshall, the witcher of Southern light. He assigned his own correspondences to the Cardinal directions which blew my mind. And he says East first, which <laughs> what? <laughs> it's always North, that. South, East, West. Like the, Oh, because of, Oh my God, that's Christianity creeping back into my mindset. I thought that, I thought you knew that part. <laughs> no. I may have. And then it went away. <laughs> New discoveries every day. Anyway, just the fact, yeah, basically that's the answer. I There are so many new things because almost every show I think, holy shit, now I'm going to have to look at things differently. So many things, the cardinal directions, um, the fact that I can interact with a plant as a being and not as a tool. Yeah. I can't remember anything else. (laughs) No, yeah. And I think that's something that's really cool about the podcast, too. And I'm going to gush on you because it's your birthday. Um, 
is okay. that there's always like people may talk about things that seem average to them because they're just so used to doing it. But in talking about the things that they're used to doing, it exposes people to different ways of thinking. Usually me. Well, you, yes, but also like what you are, what you're not hearing is the listener side of things where it's like, holy crap, that's actually like, that's a better way of doing it. Or I never thought about doing it that way. Or like, even I respect it. That's not my bag though. You go girl, you do it. Um, and so I think that's one of my, one of my favorite things about your average witch. Oh, yay. Mm-hmm. Keep doing that. Keep telling me things. that are good <laughs> Tell me all the things. <laughs> it's um, my birthday. It is your birthday. Um, what's the most challenging part of your spiritual practice? Believing it exists. Fair, yeah. <laughs> okay, you see, I'm wearing the science witch shirt. That's uh-huh. not, didn't know that question was going to come up, but that's it. <laughs> mundane over magic, mundane before magic. But then being able to take the step past mundane into magic mm-hmm. is really hard for me because. Am I full of shit? Is everyone full of shit? I don't know. They're full of shit about a lot of things. And so am I. Is this one of them? And then I have to just wade through that and decide, well, maybe, but let's take a chance. Just like when I, (laughs) I'm probably going to ask Jason Miller to be on this podcast and I'm really afraid, but all he's going to do is say no. You don't know that. I might as well go for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, that's like the worst. Yeah. He's probably not going to say, no, you pathetic little peon idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Which is what I'm anticipating. (laughs) But he's probably not going to say it. (laughs) Right. So pushing past all of the, you're a fake, you don't know how to do anything. The uh, What is that called? Intrusive thoughts. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Um, and then there was a follow-up question to this one. What makes it worth it to keep doing it? Results. Yeah. I get results. I get yeah. what I want. I, I am protected. I am monetarily compensated. I am safe. I'm in a house that I wanted Forever. I always wanted some place that I could get as many dogs as I wanted and light things on fire on the yard if I wanted to. And I can. And soon, as we get the bamboo growing, I'll be able to wander around the yard naked and every all my dreams will come true. <laughs> <laughs> you can also leave candles burning for a lot longer than you intended to. And... How safe is that? <laughs> <laughs> Your house hasn't burned down. That's all that matters. Knock on wood. <laughs> thanks for cursing me i love it <laughs> hey, I, knocked, I knocked on wood it works in appalachia all the time what was something unexpected that came to you or happened because of the show meeting so many people having people interested in what i have to say that's like the most alarming <laughs> And surprising thing. Yeah. That's really weird. You've met a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I've a lot gotten of to talk things. to so many fancy people. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, I know deep down you're like, I'm just a person in Arizona, just at a mic. I'm just this dumbass in my closet. <laughs> It's really cool to see, this is me like doting on you again. Okay. Um, It's really cool to see kind of the evolution. Um, And if I may share a story, which is super fun. I love stories. So Kim is aware of this story. The listeners are not though. 
I have a friend local to me um, and we started hanging out. He knew that I was part of Corey's Cauldron and that I listened to podcasts and stuff like that. And in kind of a moment of like, Ooh, let me show you this podcast I listened to. Uh, he pulled up your average witch um, and showed me your average witch. And it was simultaneously like one of the cutest things and also one of kind of like the most humbling things too. Um, Cause I was like, Oh, like I, I've been on that podcast a couple of times and also like, I know Kim. <laughs> and he was like, Oh my gosh, what? Um, and then like, we doubted for a second. Uh, and that was really cool. Like even like these little like, connections that you make with listeners is really cool. Um, and it's amazing to see the reach that your voice is getting and how far your podcast is going. So be proud. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm comfortable with this now. <laughs> that makes me feel funny. <laughs> Do you think that doing this podcast has changed you at all? And if so, how? So much. I am more willing to, okay. I, I say more willing, but I used to jump out of planes as part of my job. But I am more willing. I've returned to that adventurousness that made me join the army because I couldn't find anybody else to go skydiving with me. I've returned to that adventurousness with this because I'm going to ask Jason Miller to be on my podcast. Cause what's okay. he going to do? Say no, who cares? Right. I'll move on. And I'm pushing myself to learn more things like how to edit this video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm willing to travel by myself, which is a big deal. I'm just so much more willing to try things that I haven't tried before because I want this podcast to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really pushing me to push past my self-imposed limits. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. I also want to learn more because everybody comes on here talking about so many cool things and they've been so many neat places and they've done so many just interesting things. And I want to learn more about that. And I want to go there and do those things. Right. Can we go so, to Wales? Thanks everybody. Huh? Can we go to Wales? Fuck yes. Fuck yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I want to meet Mara Starling. Yeah, me too. I want her, Mara Starling to be on my show. Mara Starling, come on the show. Um, <clears throat> Everyone listening, help me manifest this. <laughs> if you know Mara Starling, please have them email me. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> or respond um, to the email that I sent them. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a series of questions. Oh, and they're Lord. kind of just like, what's your favorite thing about insert thing here? Okay. Um, so what is your favorite thing about the pagan or witchy community of podcasts? Oh, of podcasts. Yeah. Getting to learn about pagan and witchy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting to hear people talk about it, feeling comfortable because these are my people instead of like the other podcast that I listen to regularly that is not witchy. Mm -hmm. is ear biscuits and they are kind of obnoxious about how they look at the witch community to be honest yeah so it's nice to feel accepted and feel valid right uh, so that's my favorite thing so is there a podcast other than your average witch because we're here right now hi how how are you um okay. is there a podcast that kind of sticks out in your mind that kind of offers that regularly. I'm also going to remove Waba from the table. Oh, damn it. 
<laughs> How dare you? We've already mentioned those two. I really enjoy Coffee and Cauldrons. Yeah. I think they are hilarious together. I really love Abraka Ding Dong, but I don't consider that to be witchy. But I, they are very funny, and I like the way they cover things. I like the way they talk about things. Yeah. So, but is, also, sorry, but yeah. also, it's like tied with New World Witchery because they're just so great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Corey and Lane are so nice. Yes. <laughs> not to say that the folks over at Coffee and Cauldron are not nice. Um, what is your favorite thing about your practice? Um, I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Yeah. My favorite thing about my practice? That's like my favorite. I don't know. What's my favorite child? Which cat is your favorite cat? Eggy. <laughs> <laughs> instantly i know that <laughs> no contest Eggie, aka sardine by the way her name changes periodically <laughs> about my practice uh i guess i don't really need a lot of things to do it other than my my lungs <laughs> To yeah. really, really, I can do what I need to do with just my body. Yeah. I like having other stuff, but I do most of my work in the car with my lungs. <laughs> hey, fucker, get out of my house. <laughs> so something that I don't know that you've ever talked about on the podcast before. This is a Corey question. Um, you had mentioned kind of like going into nature and finding like magical items or items to use in your oh, foraging, foraging. That's the word. Yes. I couldn't find the word foraging. Okay. Um, I was scavenging with the only word I could find. I do that too. Which is also <laughs> fair. Yeah. Um, so I would love to hear you talk about that a little bit. Foraging and scavenging. In what way? So, like, what does that look like for you? Oh. What are you looking for? If I'm specifically looking for something, then I already know exactly what I'm looking for, and I'm just looking for that specific thing. Like, if I need bones, then I'll go right around until I see a roadkill snake. If I am doing a spell and I don't know what I need, then I just go out and wander around <laughs> until it presents itself and that can look like uh it can i don't even know how to explain it is it just like a gut feeling or well i'll just be thinking about what i need okay let's this is a very basic presentation of it let's say i'm doing a protection spell i'll go outside because i know there are cacti out there and choya. But if I decide that I want something else, then I'm imagining walking through my yard and things that get on my nerves. There are these little tiny flowers. I th they're called like needle bush or something like that. I don't remember what they're called. It's some kind of little tiny flea bane. It might be called desert flea bane, but it has another name because of how irritating it is. Mm -hmm. and I will find myself being real irritated because they'll get in my shoes and it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll think, oh, I could use that. Or if I, let's say if I was on a, at Anahata's and I did the class that I wanted to do there and I'm wandering through the woods and yeah. I come across a honeysuckle. There are so many different, even if I don't know that I want to do a spell, if I am just sort of wandering around thinking I need to do something because I feel like I need to do some magic and I'll right. wander through. If I found honeysuckle, then binding is something I would use it for or sweetening or nostalgia, like 
a feeling of familiarity and home. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Um, which also brings me to another topic because as an Appalachian, uh, I know that Appalachia feels very specific. Like you and I have talked about that a couple of times. What is it like to transition or even if you did transition, I don't know how, like how much you practiced when you lived in this area. Um, but what is it like to transition from magic in Appalachia to let's say magic in Arizona? Um, honestly, it's kind of the same. It's just that I'm used picking up different materials because back home I would just wander around think I need to, I need something that makes somebody hurt. I need something that heals or I need something for protection. I need something to make somebody smile and I'll wander around until I see it. And I can do that anywhere, but I feel like that's a specifically Appalachian thing in my opinion, because if you ain't got a lot, you do what you can with what you have. Yeah. Fair. And I feel like that's something that comes from that area. Yeah. I would agree with that. I also think that like, energy is very different too between like Appalachia and literally everywhere else. Oh yeah, it is like that that, is very different. Yeah. Like you going outside and getting rain means that you're getting like life. Yeah. Like you actually watch everything bloom after a really hard rain, which I'm a little jealous of, but then the like old thrum of energy that Appalachia has. Yes. Like that's so specific. Yep. And I, I remember, I remember being, I was hanging out with my friend Danny and we were on the Blue Ridge Parkway and there's this one specific spot that is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling like if I knew the right words that a portal would open. And I was so frustrated because I didn't know what the words were. I don't get that here Yeah. in the same way here. It's a lot. And I've said it before. It's so much younger and more fierce and wild and awake. Yeah. And back home, it's still powerful as hell, but it's more somnolent. Ooh, good word. Isn't it? Look at you. Isn't it? (laughs) That's what you can sink your teeth into. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> I think that um, anytime I've gone to like Dallas and I will be coming to Arizona for the gym show. Um, I, and I feel like it's probably going to feel the same as it, or similarly to as it does in Dallas, but it's always this like, Everything feels like it could change at the drop of a dime, but also because of that, nothing is like set in stone. So like everything is constantly changing and there's like a, like you said, like a wildness about that, which is crazy. Everything here wants to kill you. (laughs) Fair. <laughs> and it feels like that. It feels like an adventure just to be alive in this area. Yeah. And like I'm challenging nature every second. Back home, there are, I know that I'm fully aware that I could die back home too. And that, that if I'm not careful, things can hurt me, but it's just more subtle. Yeah. It's kind of like a genteel old Southern lady versus some young upstart. And if the upstart wants to insult you, she'll probably just say something shitty to you. And then it's done. But if the old genteel lady wants to do it, it'll be so subtle that you won't even realize that she was talking shit about you until like the next day. (laughs) And you're like, oh. That bitch okay. just <laughs> That's how I feel about Appalachia. 
Appalachia's old money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those are all negative. I, 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 I don't mean to sound like I think either place is is bad. Yeah, that's just where my brain went right now. Sorry, I love both places. Imagery, yay. <laughs> um. So, if you are comfortable, would you like to share a ritual or spell of some sort from your practice? Because hmm. we were talking about protection magic earlier. I'm just kind of going out and looking for it. I'll tell you something that I did in the past. Mm-hmm. So Ken was deployed to Afghanistan. And their their local police chief, um, the locals didn't love him because he was working with the Americans. And so when they handed Afghanistan back to the Taliban, essentially, he had a price on his head and he was in hiding. And so everybody back home, back here, everybody in the unit, plus everybody I could scrounge up to do any sort of energy work or fundraise was working to bring him home. And so one of the spells I did was to conceal him but also harass the shit out of any Taliban who were actively looking for him. And so I printed off a picture of him and then I put it in a jar and I put foil around the jar and I put in like sweetening things like honey and I have honeysuckle and red clover and things that were comfortable in there. But then on the outside, I put things like hot peppers and thorns and tarantula hair and things that were just going to repel asafetida. I use that. And then an, a, and another one I took, I, I printed a picture of a bunch of people who were on websites as being Taliban. I don't know how to say that other than that. <laughs> And I rolled them up and I got cat shit, dog shit, any kind of shit that I could find. There's rat shit outside, all of it. And I squished it together. I made this little ball and there was like hot peppers in it and salt and black pepper, just things that I think I might have put some actual acid in it that I I have because I do metal work and I have random shit laying around, like (laughs) metal shavings. And I had a glove on when I was doing all of that. So I pulled the glove off and all that stuff is inside. You know how you de... de So, and I tied it up and I wrapped it in wire and I have wire shoving into it. And then I put that in a mirrored box and I just said this. Every time they think of him, every time they try to look for him, there, oh, and I think I peed into onto it. Oh, and I put pork in it. Just everything that would be terrible because yeah. they're Muslim. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So every time they thought of him or were close to him or anything to do with him, that's what they would enter. That's what they would get. Yeah. And... Eventually, we did get him and his family over here. So he's safe. He and his family are safe over here. And I hope one day that we can meet him because he's actually very important in, he played a huge part in rescuing Chuck, our dog, from Afghanistan because Ken technically was not supposed to to rescue a dog. And he got in a lot of trouble with his chain of command for doing it. And he had to get the dog from the base where they were wow. to Kabul. He had to get him there so they could fly him out. And it's not like Ken can fucking take a Humvee and just go for a ride. It's at, They're at war. <laughs> right. And so this guy drove the dog 
to Kabul and back. I mean, he drove the dog there. And so I'm very thankful and I want to thank him for that personally. What if you listen to the podcast? How wild would that be? That would be really weird because I'm pretty sure that he is also Muslim. (laughs) Well, that would, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) <laughs> that's fair <laughs> and i don't know that he speaks enough english to get all the weird bullshit we talk about oh fair yeah i just want it to be mainstream i want everyone to talk about witchy stuff all the time me too <laughs> if you had a message and i will let you pick one this one it can be yourself or it can be another person who's newly practicing if you had one lesson that you could like instantly impart onto either younger you or a person who is newly to the craft, what would that lesson be? Don't worry about the rule of three, the law of three, whatever that Wiccan thing is. Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Do the curse. It's fine. Repercussions do happen, but it's probably not going to come back to you times three because this is not charmed. And I'm not Wiccan. So (laughs) if I was Wiccan, it would be different. If you're Wiccan, take what I say with a grain of salt because it might apply to you. It depends on your beliefs, but stop. (laughs) Stop (laughs) Stop with the three. It's not going to come back to me times three. Also, like something that I think is interesting in that is, uh, like, the way I see magic, and this is me interjecting as Corey. Um, the way I see magic is like you you're petitioning the universe to do something about someone or something. If the universe decides to pick up that message, mm-hmm. cool. Exactly. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I hate to tell you, but sometimes you can be a shithead too. <laughs> but like you could be a shithead too. Sometimes yeah. sometimes people may need to petition the universe because of something you did. That's okay. Learn your lessons, try your best to be a good person, and move on. That's the main thing. Just try to be a good person. I actually if I'm going to curse someone and I'm making finger quotes, I usually just ask the universe to give them what they deserve because I honestly don't know that person's life. Maybe they do deserve better yeah. treatment than I'm wishing on them. That is, So it's not my place to do that. Right. Maybe I don't know the whole story. Karma spells can go both ways. Yep. So... Tell us about your drink that you're drinking. My drink? Yeah. It is delicious well water in which I have ice cubes made from delicious well water. And then I took half a pack of Jolly Rancher watermelon drink mix and half a pack of Great Value Lemonade drink mix. And I threw it in there and stirred it up and it's delicious however if you have a target near you and you go to their drink mix section there is a variety pack by market pantry which i think is target's brand it has strawberry lemonade regular lemon lemonade and water lemonade or watermelon lemonade and that watermelon lemonade is amazing (laughs) but it only comes in the multi-pack and i don't like strawberry lemonade and i don't need lemon lemonade i only want the watermelon and they don't make it and so this is a shadow of how good that is (laughs) so if you're listening to the podcast and you're going to anahata's purpose oh my god bring me watermelon lemonade market pantry watermelon lemonade packets yes (laughs) unlike last year when a bunch of people bought me cheer wine which i appreciated and it's so kind (laughs) i will lose my shit if a bunch of people bring me that watermelon lemonade from market pantry but only that kind because there's also one by true lemon i think that is not even mediocre it is miserable it tastes like the lacroix version 
of drink mixes. It's bad. No. Don't drink that. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right. Um, we're getting to some of the last questions. Okie doke. And this is all about food. Ooh. So, <laughs> As someone who is like desperately hungry, this is going to be like a lot of vocal sounds. I apologize because <laughs> you're just gonna be like, "Oh yeah, oh god." <laughs> okay, here we go! Yay! Whoever did this, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> if you could manifest any food in front of you right now, what would it be? A big ass ribeye. And a giant baked potato with extra butter, extra sour cream, and a bunch of fresh ground black pepper. And the focaccia from Poor Richard's, the centerpiece, because I don't like edges. And uh, probably my salad that I make. But you didn't have to make that one, because that ruins the purpose. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's magic. It, magic works that. <laughs> but I want the poor Richard salad dressing on it. What Ooh, is with that? jicama and sugar snaps. Poor Richard's is a wonderful restaurant uh, in Colorado Springs. I love it. It's also a bookstore. It's also a, a toy store. It's also a, it's so cool. Bro, it is <laughs> so cool. It's a pizza place. It is a wine bar. <laughs> They he the Richard I don't remember his last name but he owns this strip of buildings downtown and it's all these cool little indie bookstore used bookstore amazing kind of left leaning not even kind of pretty left leaning I love it so much I love poor Richards it's one of the things I miss the most but also. <laughs> The Ethiopian place in Colorado Springs is run by the most beautiful woman in the world, Maya Hetman, whom I love. Her chicken tibs, um, the miser wat, and her salads are so good. Oh, my God. And the rosewater lemonade and her flourless chocolate cake. Oh, my God. But also, <laughs> my granddad, who is no longer with us, he used to marinate a gigantic London broil, I think. He would marinate it in teriyaki sauce that he made. That was so amazing. And I'll never have that again because he's gone. But also a, a little side memory that has nothing to, to do with what we're talking about. I asked for that from my birthday once when I was probably like 11 uh -huh. and mom also made my cake, but she marinated the steak <laughs> next to the cake overnight. Oh no. So the cake tasted like teriyaki. <laughs> 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 it was so not good. <laughs> oh my God. That brings me to another weird story because it's story time. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, let's, go. let's do it. So my sweet, sweet beloved cat named Cat Cat passed away right before Ken and I got married. Uh -huh. And it was a combination of not being able to afford to have him cremated by himself so I could get the ashes back. And also I couldn't bear to part with him. And so we put him in the freezer where we also put the top layer of our wedding cake. Cause you know, you save that A year later, I was ready to have him cremated. And when I got him out, he smelled like that wedding cake. And so he threw away everything in the freezer. <laughs> I, 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 was really, I was really concerned where that story was going. I thought it was going to be the exact opposite scenario. Where you were like, nope. well, we were ready to have our like year anniversary cake and we pulled it out. <laughs> <laughs> nope oh no we pulled him out first happily <laughs> <laughs> oh cat cat i i love that you had a cat named cat cat <laughs> <laughs> what 
What's his first name? Cat. What's his last name? Cat. <laughs> so it's just named Cat? No, it's Cat Cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, do you want people to send you pictures of food all of the time? Yes. Oh, my God. When everybody went to the jim and jupe tour and people were sending me marcos of their meals my heart grew 47 sizes bigger that is my favorite thing if you have something that you love to eat and it just fills your heart with joy and you think of it take a picture of it and send it to me on instagram or email it to me (laughs) <laughs> that makes my life. My niece recently, for the first time in her life, she's like, I don't know, 20 something now. She sent me a picture of the food she was eating and I freaked out <laughs> and all caps her. I love this so much. And she said, I know that's why I did it. <laughs> but I don't remember ever telling her that I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. If you, uh, I will love you so much if you send me pictures of your food because I fucking love food. The way to Kim's heart, food directly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, it probably helps that every time someone's like, "Oh, I'm going somewhere," the first thing that you say is, "Send me pictures of all your food." Yes. <laughs> So like, <laughs> or go here and if I if I've been there, this is where you need to eat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you gave me like you gave me a chore list of places to go in Philadelphia. It was great. But it also like it removed all of the guesswork. I was like, listen, this is where Kim wants me to go. I gotta go to <laughs> Like Did you some... go to Primani Brothers? I really want to go there. I don't think so. What what is their thing? Remind me. Uh, French fries and their giant sandwiches. No, we did not go there. I really want to go there. We did. I know you went to Federal Donuts. I know you went there. We didn't go there. I'm so envious. Donuts were there for us. Oh. Um, Which they were. envious. So good. Um, They were out of donuts when Margo and I and Casey went there. And they had this chicken sandwich that sounded amazing on their website, and they were didn't have anything. We um, went there, and my heart um, just sank. crumbled. <laughs> just nothing. It 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 was dust. There was no yeah. heart. All of your heart went with the food. It like collapsed on itself like a neutron star. Is a neutron star that does that? <laughs> It's one of the stars. I don't know. I haven't been in an anyway. Grade. That one. <laughs> Astrology, astronomy, that study of the stars. Either one. You know. <laughs> That's it, though. That's all the questions. Oh. I can pull more out of my butt if you want me to. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, I'm totally. I love talking to you, Kim. What are you talking about? I can always ask you more. I was going to turn the recording off, and we we're just going to talk about the shit we need to talk about. <laughs> I'm, for that too. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I just love talking to you. <laughs> okay, I know. I miss you so much. I miss you. We're going to have a new podcast called. <laughs> the intro is just going to be us like fighting over who gets the mic that episode. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> no, it's mine. Yes. No, it's mine. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to do this until I, I buy the uh, domain, by the way. That's fine. I am buying the domain, but I'm not going to pu- pu- publicize the name until we actually, <laughs> oh, <that's fair. laughs> until I buy it. That's fair. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we going to close out somehow? Just the end of the podcast. Just- <laughs> cold, cold, listen, it was a cold open. It's a cold close. Let's go. Okay. This is a freezer door, people. Bye. (laughs) The end. Thanks for listening to this episode of Your Average Witch. You can find us all around the internet on Instagram at Your Average Witch Podcast, Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash hive house at youraveragewitch.com 
and at your favorite podcast service. Want to help the podcast grow? Leave a review. You can review us on Amazon and Apple Podcasts, and now you can rate us on Spotify. If you'd like to recommend someone for the podcast, like to be on it yourself, or if you'd like to advertise on the podcast, send an email to youraveragewitchpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next Tuesday.